Back in 1994, when I first started doing art class testing, we had 650 deaths a year approximately. Now we're down to 2009, the 2010 data just came out, was 271 fatalities. Electrical safety deserves a little more attention than even normal safety because it leads to more fatalities and to more disabling injuries than regular uh, incidents. 50% of the injuries are to the face, more than 50% are to the hands, right hand being the most prevalent because most people are right handed. Plasma is rough. It looks like just a little flowing thing coming through there. This is a sixth of a second you're watching here. Here's what happened in real time. I have a cotton t-shirt on the mannequin. We hit him with that arc flash that you saw just bellowing out toward him. And what it was, this was about 45 seconds it took the guy to get out there. The whole side of the t-shirt is gone and the whole back of the t-shirt is gone. Because of the way the arc went, it mostly went on the back of the body, ignited the t-shirt and just burned it off the mannequin. So the right stuff makes a difference. And I, I really don't care what brand of clothing you wear. What I found is that if the clothing doesn't ignite and continue to burn, so you get something that's reliable on that side, poly cotton and cotton are always a, always a bit. Sometimes a bad bit, but they're always a bit. Cotton will burn. Once it ignites, the body burns are about the same in poly cotton and cotton. The problem with any kind of a glove is contamination. Now, gloves that can be washed have an advantage when they get contaminated. Here's leather gloves that I've contaminated with diesel fuel. Pretty common contaminant. Somebody's pouring diesel fuel, they get some diesel fuel on the gloves, and they become one of my favorite things, something that burns. This is a flame-resistant jacket over top of a polycotton uniform. I'm going to ignite every time the polycotton underneath once I hit a certain point. These guys are working in a food processing plant that they have to wear hair nets and beard nets. Here's the one they used to wear. Polyester versus one that doesn't melt. These are flame resistant, one is, and one is arc rated. And it's not even subtle, the difference between them. Here's an FR treated polyester. Well, it's got a good FR treatment in it, but the problem is it only passes the vertical flame test. I call it the big lighter test. As long as you're only in a big lighter exposure, it's probably okay. The problem in real life is this is now burning up over the face. Part of it's blown up over your face. Here, the arc rated materials don't melt, run, or drip in the arc flash. And so that's what you really want. Really, the big critical things in arc flash is outer layers need to be arc rated. Under layers need to be arc rated or non-melting. I prefer them to be arc rated. Cover as much of the body as you can, fit it comfortably, get them to wear it every single day. Just throw in a coverall or throw in a flash suit to somebody and say, well, you know, put this on when it works. What happens is they won't have it on when the big thing happens. We've had so many incidents where somebody's doing grounding, they're taking off the grounds, they, somebody energizes it from afar or something, and they wind up getting in an incident because they were wearing the art class suit the whole time when they were doing voltage testing and everything. But this is dead, I'm taking off the grounds, and I was cleaning up, and somebody turned on the switch gear, and the switch gear blew up. And those kind of things happen if you're in an arc rated uniform that really eliminates that completely. Follow manufacturer's own instructions, no pouring bleach, no fabric softener, and inspect for tears and frays. Making sure that the clothing is in good repair is good. It's not that it'll ignite where you have a tear, but you're going to get burned where you have a tear. You want to keep them in good repair.